Sometimes all the warning signs are there and you just listen to it. If your gut is telling you not to do something, then just don't do it. Trust me. Hey boys and girls, I want to tell you about this time way back when, before I had a girlfriend, I used to do this thing called dating. When I was dating, I would meet up with some very interesting girls. Um, so it was one time, just out of college, had my first job, and you know when you just get out of college and you have that first job, it doesn't pay all that much, so I really didn't make that much money. I had enough for like cereal, my little apartment, and some gas money. That's all I had. That's all I had to. But you know, when you get out of college, you have your own place, you make your own money, you don't feel so bad. You try to go out, you find a person, a nice person to spend your time with, maybe more, not me, because too lazy to multitask like that. My first job out of college, I worked at a bank, and I was a customer service rep, so I would take care of everybody that comes in. So I would meet a lot of people every day. And as you know, during my time at the bank, I would meet a nice lady or two, maybe, who knows. And sometimes during during meeting those nice ladies or two, you do a little something called flirt. Flirt a little bit, not always, not always, because that's creepy, you have their information. But if they're giving you some sort of vibe and you feel it, then you just throw it out there. Just be a little flirtatious out there. So being the natural that I am, one time the flirting worked. Oh, it worked way more than one time, but I'm, I'm gonna tell you about this one time it did. There was this young lady, um, she was built like a Coke bottle, mean Coke bottle. Like, as soon as she walked in the door, I immediately noticed her and I kind of did that whole push everybody out the way. Like, yes, I will service you. Come here with the glowing lights. But she was bad, like, whew, man. You can see her from the front is what I'm saying. So I help her. I flirt a little bit, but I was getting like that halfway vibe. So it's like, this can go either way. Let me help her out what she needs and let her go. But she kept coming back more and more to get other things and she would only want to talk, want to deal with me. So I'm like, hmm. I think something's happening here. Sooner than later, on a first name basis, she's telling me about her life and telling her about mine. We're getting we're getting pretty close, relatively close. We're a customer and service provider relationship. We would flirt back and forth and it was it was fine. I didn't expect anything of it. Sometimes it's just nice to flirt. But eventually something really funny happened during one of our last interactions at the bank. She actually asked me for my personal number. I was like, is this happy opposite day? Like, what's going on here? Not to say no girl has ever asked me for my number, but like seven times out of 10, I'm the one asking. So this was something completely new to me. Or of course I gave her my number. And after that, we talked for a while. We talked back and forth. Things were going pretty well. And then out of nowhere, she asked me on a date. I'm used to girls being forward, but not that forward. So that completely knocked me for a surprise. But I was like, hey, listen, listen, it's 2000 something. When we can be in charge, all right, let's do this. So we started arranging the date and that's where the story takes an interesting turn. Cause uh, even though she asked for the date, she asked me to actually set up the date. So I was like, okay, that's fine. And I talked to her, I said, hey, where do you want to go for a date? Would you like to go to Applebee's, Chili's, Friday's? Something okay for a first date. Pause, no, it's not mind blowing. I know this, but I'm just out of college and broke, so. Like, give me a break. But then she says something really strange to me while we're uh, trying to arrange this date. She says, I don't do chain. I'm sorry, what? I don't do chain. Uh, no, 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 not this chains, this chains. Yeah, she doesn't do chain restaurant. Whoa, okay, <laughs> all right. That was a new one for me because before then, no girl had ever said that to me, ever, period. I'm just out of college and so is she. So we both were just out of college. We're both still pretty young. So what does she mean she doesn't do chains? So over the phone, when she said she didn't do chains, I was like, huh? She said this really strange thing and it, it, it was so weird to me at the time that she would say that, but it was actually a warning that I should have listened to. She said over the phone, and I can't make this up. She said, well, you know that song Gold Digger? I'm like, yeah. She's like, well, I ain't saying I'm a gold digger, but I ain't messing with no broke. And I'm like, ha ha ha, that's cute. If a girl says something like that, run. Run as fast and far as you can, period. And then that made me think of a few things. During most of our conversations, they were actually one-sided. You know when I said I used to tell her about me and she used to tell me about her? It really wasn't that much. It used to be her telling me about her and me trying to get a word in edgewise, but she was so bad that I disregarded that. The second she said that, my spider sense was tingling. I was like, oh, wait, what? What's going on here? Something's not right. Something's not right. So whenever I have an issue with this, there's two people that I talk to. I talk to my big brother, who's 
wise man, wise man, who's been through it all. And one of my best friends, the guy I talk about sometimes in the other videos, he thinks just like me when it comes to this stuff. What would I say to myself in this case when I hear something like that? They said what I thought they would say. Brother was like, she said, what? Oh, listen, don't go, don't go. Cut her off right now. And I told my boy and he said, yeah, you're gonna have to back out of that date. You're, you're gonna have to back out. You're, you're just gonna have to. No, because if she's already exhibiting these type of signs now, imagine what's going to happen down the road. But being the gentleman that I am, I've already agreed to the date and I didn't really want to back out. I didn't want to flake out. And also, never know, you never know. You want to give somebody a chance before you completely write them off. I should have completely written her off. So flash forward, we get to the restaurant. She picks this French spot, French cuisine. It wasn't bad. The food wasn't bad, right? But I took one look at the menu and was like, oh my God, this is half my salary. There's so much money that would be spent at this restaurant if we do it. Her eyes lit up. She already knew what she wanted to order. So she did. She orders an appetizer and a main dish. And then the dessert menu comes over and she looks at the dessert menu. And obviously she orders dessert and wine. So she ordered everything on the menu, everything. At this stage, I'm putting a nice face on, but in my mind, I'm looking at her like, and another funny thing is during the whole dinner, during the whole dinner, all she talked about was what her ex-boyfriends used to do for her. Courtside seats to this, they took her to trips to that. And I'm like, I'm not a baller. I don't I don't know <laughs> what section you think you were shopping from, but you got the wrong idea. I'm not that. I'm I'm broke. Sorry. So the whole night goes like that. Not only did she talk about herself the whole time, but she talked about, you know, what guys do for her and what guys give her. Like she's prepping me for what, what I would have to do for her to be graced by her presence. I excuse myself for a second and I, I go to the bathroom and I, and I text my brother and, and my boy about all this and they're like, yo, leave right now, leave right now. But I'm like, well, uh, I can't do that for dinner. She knows where I work. It might be a big mess. So I didn't. Or stand the dinner and the check comes. You gotta remember these things. Let's flash forward. Let's, or let's, let's flash back. She asked me out on the date. She picked the spot. She ordered way more things than I did. I'll tell you what happened. The check came, person brought it over and she completely, she just stared me in the, she stared me in the face. Didn't even break stride, like didn't, kept talking, didn't look at the check one time. Now, I'm a gentleman, so for first dates, I always pay anyway, and most dates I always pay anyway, because hey, lucky to have a girl go out with me, I guess. But you asked me out, at least do that cute fight for the check thing, so I could say, no, no, I'll pay for it. But she didn't even pretend that she was gonna do that. She was like, you're a sucker. So you know what I did at that point? I got up and walked away, end of video. Okay, so I didn't actually do that. I didn't do that. I wish I did. I wish I had at that point, because that would have been that would have been insane. And she probably would have told that story for the rest of her life and learned a lesson. Probably not learned a lesson though. Instead of seething, I pulled out the one cr good credit card I did have and I paid for the meal. And to this day, many years later, that is one of the three most expensive meals I've ever paid for. I've made a lot more money since then. So that should tell you something. So uh, we got our separate raise at the end of the night and she actually calls me the next day to talk about the date, how great it was and how she wants to do this again. I wasn't my usual engaging self with her and then she asked what's wrong. Her mistake. Cause then I let her have it. I told her how expensive that restaurant was for me. If that's the way she wants to do things from now on, then she should, she definitely needs to find somebody else. And I told her, I was like, hey, you didn't even look at the check. And she said, I know, I did that on purpose. Okay, okay, I see what's going on here. Use me for a free meal, That that's okay. That's okay, that's just who you are. That's, that's cool, good stuff, great job. Like I said, I let her have it uh, pretty bad pretty bad and then she just got weird she says she likes she's into this weird stuff yeah I'm, I'm all the way out ejected parachute get my number I forget yours have a nice life click and that was then that was it never heard a see from her again if I'm being honest with myself I saw all the warning signs beforehand let's backtrack to the beginning of the story she came into the bank to get a loan for a car she definitely couldn't afford a car that was way above her price range and way above her budget. It's a really expensive car, so she really wanted it. That was sign number one. Sign number two is when she started talking about all these expensive trips and vacations that she went on and given her income level, she shouldn't be able to afford that stuff by herself. Hmm. Sign number three, when she says she did not do chain restaurants. Guess what? Nowadays, I have graduated from chain restaurants. I'm, that's, that's not where I take my dates anymore. But you're just out of college, you're not making any money. And then clue number four was when she actually said the gold digger thing. Like what? that should have been that I should have really just said no. 
And if you tell somebody that thinks like you about a situation and they tell you what to do and this is somebody you trust and somebody whose word you actually take, then just listen to them or at least take what they have to say in, under advisement. Had I listened to my brother or I listened to one of my best friends, I wouldn't have been in that situation. I wouldn't have been out so much money. You know how much cereal and pizza you could buy with that money? I don't even want to talk about it. I'm so upset. No matter how bad you are on the outside, if you're ugly on the inside, you're not worth it period. So that's the end of my story, boys and girls. Thus ends the story of the girl who I'm not saying she's a gold digger because she said it herself. Thank you for watching, isn't it? Thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, share, learn from my mistakes.